a subset of Python. So the way it works is we have the subset, which we can then compile down to a binary, uh, and then it runs like a normal thing. And what makes this really cool is we have a, a very advanced just-in-time compiler, and so we're able to execute your code much, much faster. And so essentially the way our JIT works is it's a tracing just-in-time compiler similar to a trace monkey, which is the JavaScript engine inside Firefox. And what that means is we uh, observe your code at runtime, and we run it normally in an interpreter uh, for the first uh, about a thousand iterations of a loop. And then uh, once we've observed that your loop is hot by hitting this threshold of a thousand, we, uh, we run it once in a super observant mode where we record every branch you take, every type we see, and then we emit uh, specialized machine code for these types and these branches. And then from then on we execute this uh, machine code instead of running it in an interpreter. And so, as a result of this, uh, PyPy is super fast. So, if you go to speed.pypy.org, you can see a, a bunch of benchmark comparisons we have with uh, CPython. Uh, some guy ran a benchmark uh, where he was trying to write about how uh, V8, which is the JavaScript uh, compiler inside Chrome, is, is so much faster than all the Python implementations. And then he went back and added PyPy, and it turns out that uh, of his 50 benchmarks, PyPy wins on 29, V8 wins on 20, and there's a tie on one of them. So, feeling pretty good. And uh, I can prove it. So, who here thinks that uh, uh, real-time video processing is like the domain of a... Like, that's something you got to write in C, right? It's got to be super fast. So, we have here uh, a video of uh, a guy skiing. It's very exciting. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we have here some, uh, some Python code to... Uh, do run edge detection on this uh, on uh, this video, and as you can see, it runs in basically real time. So we're able to do this analysis in real time. It's, uh, it's pretty awesome. For comparison, here is a C Python trying to run it. Be, be, be patient. <laughs> C Python's the built-in Python? Uh, yeah, it's the reference Python. On just about everyone's computer here, it's the thing you get when you run Python at the command line. And yeah, it's about 500 times slower on this example, so I, I will let it keep running. <laughs> and so uh, NumPy is a, a Python framework for doing uh, numerical calculations and analysis on uh, vectors, arrays, and matrices. And uh, it's extremely popular in the uh, Python scientific community. There's a lot of other libraries written around it, such as uh, SciPy, which features all sorts of like physics and electrical engineering algorithms written using these uh, arrays. And uh, it's written in C, so it's, it's pretty fast. Uh, but as a result, uh, it uses the C Python C API, so it doesn't run on top of PyPy uh, right now out of the box, because that extension API is basically C Python specific. And so uh, the solution that we've been uh, attacking for the past while is to essentially re-implement it. And uh, work has begun on this. So essentially the goals I'm tackling, or uh, we're targeting uh, with this rewrite is to re-implement as little as possible. So they do have some code in pure Python and we want to reuse that as much as possible. And we want it to be fast. We know that for these, a lot of these scientists, being fast means you know they need 20 servers instead of 100. Or they get their analysis over their coffee break instead of leaving it running overnight. And we know that that's, that's really the selling point for PyPy is speed. And so here's an example sort of using it with this array A, which uh, has numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, B has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and Adam does this, uh, this pairwise operation, so you get 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And so that's basically sort of the core of NumPy is these set of operations that all operate uh, element-wise on different arrays and their composability. So, some more examples that run uh, uh, on uh, the, the subset we've implemented so far are, uh, yeah. So here's a pretty boring example, it just takes a, an array and adds it up uh, five times. So if we time it under CPython, it takes a... Uh, takes about uh, 0.3 seconds, and if we time it under PyPy, it takes, uh, it takes uh, slightly less. But uh, on the other hand, if we look at this uh, second example, 
where we, uh, where we do these computations. We do a different computation, but this time we do it by uh, doing element-wise operations ourselves rather than using the built-in uh, vectorized operations. So if we time this, uh, see that uh, C Python's NumPy takes uh, about four seconds. And PyPy's takes uh, about uh, a tenth of a second. So the ability to write your algorithms how, in whichever way you please is, uh, we think, a pretty big advantage. And so uh, the primary goals I'm targeting are uh, supporting more data types. So when we started uh, this implementation, the only data type we supported were uh, double floats, so 64-bit precision floats. Uh, NumPy supports a huge array of uh, different data types with these arrays. So they're capable of representing integers of signed and unsigned of all different sizes, different size floats, complexes, and even uh, creating your own custom uh, composite data types. Just by saying I have a one four byte uh, integer and I have uh, an eight byte float and uh, I have 10, by 10 bytes of uh, characters. And so you can create these custom composite types. So that's, that's the first major goal. Uh, the second major goal is supporting a multi-dimensional array. So right now, uh, we only support single dimensional arrays. Uh, having uh, n dimensional arrays is obviously super important for just all sorts of different algorithms. You can emulate them yourself, but there's tons of algorithms people have already written that assume multi dimensional arrays. So we want to add support for those, and that's probably uh, the biggest part of this uh, project. Um, you can find all our code, it's on uh, Bitbucket, our website, and uh, questions? It's more of a PyPy question. Mm -hmm. Um, is there, what's the roadmap for PyPy into like Py, Python 3000? So we recently published our uh, roadmap for Python 3000. Essentially the goal is right now we are uh, trying to find people who are interested and in put together uh, either funds on it or just uh, people who volunteer time. And uh, essentially uh, we have sort of the, the technical roadmap of how we go about doing it. And, uh, I think somebody's already created the branch, so sort of ongoing work now. Uh, so PyPy runs just about any pure Python code out of the box fine. Uh, for projects with dependencies on uh, sort of things that have C extensions, things like NumPy, uh, or uh, sort of a lot of the database drivers have uh, big uh, C extension components, you, we, have a, we have a basic compatibility layer for these C extensions, but it's much slower and it's not complete. And so for C extensions, you either have to see if they run under that or look for an alternative. So for example, MySQL and Postgres adapters both have pure Python alternatives that just work as drop and replacement. So yeah. which CPU architecture is this type by target? Uh, right now we talk our uh, main branch or uh, our sorry, the latest releases target uh, x86 and x86 64. Okay. And we have uh, branches where people are working on uh, ARM and PowerPC support. Thanks, guys. Thank you.